Live Spirit Chat happens on most Sundays at 12 noon United States Central Standard Time. Accept early bird questions on Instagram to talk about mirror spells. I'm using a magic mirror as a personal tool is very, very traditional in European witchcraft. To get a mirror which has never caught the reflection of anybody and then you charge it by leaving it under the moonlight and then you keep it covered with a black cloth at all times so that it doesn't catch any other reflections or reflect any other lights other than moonlight. And then you can use it as a scrying tool. The mirror is really an excellent way to, to communicate with those other entities if you so choose to. Um, mirror spells are for reversing energy as well as directing energy. So directing energy to that target means that the mirror needs to be facing the target. You can use this as a healing spell. You can use this as a love spell to direct energy away from a target. The mirrors will face away. This is good when you have received unwanted energies. It doesn't have to be a, a reversal spell. It doesn't have to be a return to sender spell. And then simply place them in all of your windows. Just one mirror in a main window can be very sufficient you could do this in a way that is both more aggressive and more on the DL by having a large mirror near your front door. Um, dress that mirror for protection, put a tiny dot of protection oil in the four corners and keep it hanging next to your front door to thwart unwanted energies or unwanted visitors. Traditionally, you would have it facing away from your house. That one, of course, is Halloween, or it's the pagan origin of Halloween related to Day of the Dead. The world beyond the veil is the world of spirits where magic takes place. We know it's there, especially when we are witches or we're very sensitive people or we're psychics. We can definitely feel this. Sometimes we can see it. We can interact with it. The worlds are meeting up with each other. One of my very favorite Samhain rituals is a dumb supper. You make a feast, you make a big dinner. Usually when I commune with my ancestors is in the context of I'm communing with those benevolent ancestors that are spiritually evolved to an extent that they are a spirit guide of mine. During Samhain, it's a great time to commune with all kinds of spirits of the dead and you're inviting them into your home. Feed them everything that you're going to feed yourself and you would like candles on the table and you would eat with them the way that you would eat with anybody else. You want to communicate with them after the supper, a kind of a mediumship session, offer them gratitude and offer them respect. At the end of the dumb supper, you very clearly say goodbye to them. Release the spirits from your dwelling place. Suggestions for a spell or spells to help find the perfect house to buy. Um, St. Joseph is the patron saint of real estate to light a candle for him each day, to say some prayers of gratitude, and to give him some simple offerings. He'd ask him to help you. And it doesn't have to be complicated and speak from your heart. Get specific and talk about what kind of house you need, what kind of price range. So when St. Joseph assists you with finding that house, make sure that you give him some additional offerings that are a bit more generous. Is it okay for me to explore different culture traditions? This is a complicated issue. You're not going to be taking on those traditions as your own, appropriating those traditions and giving credit where credit is due how you honor the peoples of those traditions. All of our ancestors have migrated all over the world. Some of that might be because ancestors are coming through from long, long ago. And I believe in reincarnation. There are things that we may be carrying with us from lifetimes that we've lived before. There are ancestors of the land, there are ancestors of traditions, and then there are ancestors of our blood. There's ancestors of the land 
are very important to honor. In this culture where we need so much healing, they may call to you, they may be coming to you, paying my spiritual dues for the the simple fact that I live on this land, that I benefit from this land, and that I benefit from the culture that has been here before me. It's up to the spirits. There's a big difference between following a path and just studying about a path. And you start to see the core truth or the common threads. And I find that incredibly beneficial for building your own spiritual philosophy, building your worldview and building your own spiritual practice. You can distill the core truth, really learn the foundations of spiritual practice. And they pretty much wiped out um, the evidence of European paganism or European shamanism. Many of these traditions are living traditions. You take that into consideration when you're studying the traditions of other people. Many of these traditions continue like Native American traditions, like Voodoo or Voodoo. There are people that are living now that carry these traditions with them now. Consider that in your studies and explorations as well. is going to offer more respect. To join us in our private location, just click the links below the YouTube video and you will find out how to join. Many, many blessings. Be well. Until next time.